Oh, there we go. Look at the Skype update. It's doing all the fancy words. Okay, hello, everyone. Hello, y'all. We're back, and we're here to talk. We haven't been here for a while. It's been a minute since we've been here, right? Yeah, yeah. It's been about at least more than two weeks, I think. Yeah, it's it's been it's been a minute. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, we have to. Yeah, it's been it's been a few weeks because I've been busy and you've been busy. So, yeah. um. So yeah, that's kind of been a thing. But the good thing is we're back now, so we can do this. Um, but yeah, so um what was I saying? I was saying something. We're yeah, it's been a minute since we've done this, but right, that. we got we got we got a couple things to talk about. We got Eternals to talk about that we saw over the weekend. We got um yeah. spider-man leaks to discuss which we will not spoil by the way we haven't seen it so we haven't seen the picture we don't do leaks here we don't believe in leaks i hate leaks <laughs> don't worry we're all good. Fair, also fair the dune spoiler free review is one view away from hitting 1000 so all right I'll, I'll go tell someone to watch it and then g- they'll give you their uh 1000th view so then we'll have three videos over a thousand which would be cool so uh yeah we got eternals to talk about spider-man no yes. way home um yes. what else we'll we rank talk them about? we'll do all the ranking stuff we'll talk about money and box office mm-hmm. um there's more yeah well we're, we're, we're gonna go with it as we go along i guess there's definitely more i'm just too stupid to re- oh yes we'll talk about star wars too oh there's star wars news yeah oh okay oh it's star wars <laughs> news there's two pieces of Star Wars. I think you're gonna find this. I want to hear. I'm really actually interested to hear what you think of this, because I know you're a very star. You're very critical of Star Wars. So. Especially, especially the last couple of ones they released. Yeah. So I'll be interested to hear your thoughts on this. Okay. Um. And we can then talk about you know the what we watched and stuff. There's some. If you're watching this on YouTube, you're seeing the thing on your screen with the words. So it's not like so you know what you were doing to talk about. We're just saying this now because. I've totally written down it all. You know, we're always super prepared for these. I've not written it down. In my head, it's written down, which means it doesn't actually. Yeah. So let's start by talking. We'll start with Star Wars. Why not? Because we'll leave Eternals kind of for the middle. Mm. Because then we'll keep people's interest captivated. Um, Okay. So we recently learned that they are now officially um, shelving to some extent patty jenkins rogue squadron film which they announced what's rogue squadron what's uh like we don't it's something about ships and pilots and a story which patty jenkins was going to direct which they've taken off the release calendar and they basically just delayed indefinitely now the rumor is that they may be getting cold feet because like kind of like what they did with the Colin Trevorrow kind of situation with the final Star Wars movie. And they're kind of like, mm, I don't know if we want to do something different and we want to. And so they're kind of, you know, hesitant to go forward with this. It's also possible that there's other factors we, that we don't know about, but I would, I was interested to hear what you thought about this because you really wanted, I think you were really someone who wanted a different direction for Star Wars to an extent. Yeah. And, so I want to know what you think about this idea of them kind of – they have something different, something that's going to be – could be a really good story that they're kind yeah. of just putting over on the side. Like, like you said, for sure, a different way in Star Wars considering the fact that the prequels in were just not it. So to kind of turn away from that, you know, turn away from Rey and uh, – not the, pre- not the prequels, the recent – are the, are the recent movies that came out called the prequels or what? They're called the sequels. The sequels, never mind. Sorry, the sequels. The prequels are great, the prequels but the sequels, the sequels were um were not as great. So to turn it into a different direction, to introduce new characters we probably haven't seen on the big screen before, that that's actually that actually can bring you know Star Wars back bouncing a little bit and booming, considering the fact that the last movie they released was not that good. Yeah. So the yeah. So sorry, I was just doing some quick googling. Um, 
So this is the official description. The next Star Wars feature film will be Rogue Squadron, directed by Patty Jenkins. The story will introduce a new generation of starfighter pilots as they earn their wings and risk their lives in a bound-breaking, <laughs> high-speed thrill ride and move the saga into the future era of the galaxy. And she also said they're doing something that is original and that has not been done before. And so this is this is the movie that they are now deciding. We're just going to put it on hold. It's supposed to come out in 2023. Do they? Okay, they said indefinitely, right? Indefinitely. They've taken okay. off the calendar. We don't know. So what do you think about this? Are you, is, do you think, well, do you think they're moving it because they don't want to do something original necessarily and that could end up backfiring? Or do you think it's another reason that we don't know yet? I think it may be another reason, to be honest. I think maybe because production for them has kind of slowed down. Maybe they did really have sincere intentions to release this movie in 2023, but maybe it's just kind of slowed down and they don't want to, like, rush things too quickly, I guess. So you don't think it has anything to do with, like, a Patty J- like them being kind of, you know, worried that this would be too different or too... And maybe they want to... Or maybe Patty Jenkins wants to go in a different direction than they do. I think it's there is something in that for sure. Maybe that um, fans are a little scared that it's going to be in a different direction. But I think there's also maybe like a little bit of you know we're we're we're, we're kind of like you know kind of late do, do late on this assignment that we have to do. So it's it's a mix of both, like sixty forty. And I mean, Wonder Woman three could also be a part of this. Mm-hmm. And Patty Jenkins, it could just they, this could literally just be. Oh, Patty Jenkins wants to do Wonder Woman 3 next, and so this will just be after that, and it could be as simple as that. Mm-hmm. Or it could be more complicated in terms of being you know, much more deep and layered in terms of the issues, yeah. I guess. But that was the first thing. Now, the second thing is – it. So you know how Kevin Feige is going to be producing a Star Wars movie, right? Yeah, yeah. We, uh, we discussed it uh... – it, Way we, back we discussed when. it once, yeah, yeah. So they're apparently saying that Chloe Zhao, the person who directed Eternals, directed Eternals is yeah. now being courted and is is the the I guess the heavy per, like favorite person to direct this new Star Wars movie that, that Kevin Feige is going to produce. Oh, that's Marvel and Star Wars like crossing over now. I mean, Kevin Feige, we know Kevin Feige loved what she's done with Eternals, and oh, yeah. he's just absolutely like. Like he he's the way he's loved this movie, I think, is being different from the way he's loved any other movie. And I think it's because it's so and we'll talk about this obviously when it gets when we talk about Eternals, but it's been just it's such a unique film that I think it's hard to like he just loves the way it it's just so different from everything else. Right? Mm-hmm. It's really on its own. It's the first Marvel movie that doesn't even resemble a marvel movie yeah it was it was a lot different so what do you think about that because obviously i know because i I actually i want to know yeah what do you think about her directing a star wars movie yeah she did eternals really good actually um and she took a different perception on marvel so if she's directing star wars i think she's going to do the same where she takes a different perception on star wars and turns it 180 degrees so are you excited for that i the theoretical idea yeah, not for the worst is she going to turn out 180 degrees, but something different. That's going to be something we we ain't ever seen before. Which is interesting, obviously, because obviously, unlike Marvel, Star Wars has been very hesitant to do different. Yeah. Which I, I assume, again, if you tell Kevin Feige to do something, he's doing his thing, which will be awesome, which will be, relate to the source material, but it be his own thing. And you won't tell him no, and obviously no one at Disney is going to say, um, Kevin Feige, we don't trust you. He's currently breaking in billions for you. You can just let him make this movie. So, uh, yeah. but I think her, and I know that the internet's been so angry at her for some reason because, um, you know, she's selling out because she wants to make blockbusters, I guess, yeah. and getting paid what she's worth and want doesn't want to like do small films forever. Apparently that's like selling out and stuff. I don't know. Apparently if you do like an Oscar winning film, you you can't direct Marvel movies because it's a sellout of your beliefs of your career? or something. Or, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what they want. 
apparently getting a, doing your job and doing what you want to do on top of that and directing about what movies you choose to do is is selling out and is dishonorable even though you want to look at the actors who did stuff in marvel i mean you know captain america the winter soldier who's the big classic actor in that one who was it um Oh my god, his name is Blanken. Uh, why is his name Blanking? Oh my goodness. Who is it? Remind me, who is it? It's Robert Redford. Robert, oh my god, why did I forget that name? I don't know. Oh. But yeah, it's Robert, Robert Redford was in that one. Yeah, um, he, you was, know, he was. Anthony Hopkins is Odin. Uh you know, do we have to talk about like big actors doing things like you know i just named two uh, matt damon making a cameo in thor ragnarok Nah, it's less that's different or oh yeah yeah that's a that's a cameo that's not a role or how about i don't know but there's just a ton of them basically moral of the story is sam jackson i mean you know sam jackson yes yeah. although he does a lot of stupid movies too so you know stupid um, but good yeah obviously yeah. good but no, but he does do like he like he isn't like a prestige actor purely. He does a bunch of like he did Star Wars and he did he does all those other things, you know, mm. Snakes in the Plane. Did that one, right? Yeah. yeah. But like, yeah, I don't. I I hate this kind of notion of tiers of actors. Like, oh, there's the prestige tier of actors, and then there's the lesser. Like, come on. Yeah. And it's ridiculous. Prob- you know, you know what the problem is though. You know why this happens. Why? This happens because of the the awards and the way that that's done and the critics and these people. I guess the, these, you know, they they what they do is they basically create divisions, right? You look at the Oscars. How are they done? What movies are always front and center, and which movies are never front and center, even if they are really good movies? Marvel and movies. Which actors are not front and center, even if they're really good actors? And there have been multiple people who've said this. If you do comedies, you probably won't get nominated for an Oscar, even if you do a really good job, because yeah. they don't believe comedy is as hard to do as um, as like a drama or a whatever piece. Dude, Marvel movies. Incredible, incredible movies. Incredible movies, but they, never they, they don't get nominated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, Chadwick Boseman wasn't even nominated, and, you, and Michael B. Jordan wasn't nominated. Michael B. Jordan probably should have gotten nominated for supporting. Was Avengers Infinity War nominated for Best Picture? No. Yeah, exactly. That, that's that's that the just only Marvel movie ever be nominated for Best Picture is Black Panther. Pro- proves your point. Avengers Infinity War is going to always be in in the opinion and I and I, what I think is the opinion. Yeah. Infinity War lost Best Visual Effects to First Man. The First Man, yeah. That's the type of thing, though. It's that's, like it's not criminal. like you know the big categories and whatever. Should Robert Downey Jr. have won at least one Oscar through his entire career? Maybe. Oh, even Sam Rockwell actually did Iron Man. Um, mm-hmm. I can't forget about that one. Um, but yeah, like should he should he be nominated for an an acting Oscar at some point? You know, be that Infinity War or whatever or Endgame or whatever. Yeah, I that mean, was absolutely maybe. criminal. That first man won. Over the, Infinity over War. Over Infinity War. Infinity War, the movie that had the most VFX shots in any movie. And they did it so, so amazingly well. And it didn't win. Absolutely well, their criminal. fight scenes were in the day. That's yeah. hard to do. Very. There's a reason that they, there's a reason all the big heavy CGI fights are at night. If you mm. like, you know, if you go through movies and you look at all those big fight scenes, for example, Wonder Woman 1984. What was the big fight with Cheetah? Where was that? It was at night. It was at night. Right? It's always dark, raining, or at night when these mm-hmm. fights, these big CGI fights happen. Spider-Man Homecoming. Where was that plane fight? At, at nighttime. Night. Where was the, you know, you go through all these movies. All these fights are at night for a reason. It's mm-hmm. so easy to cover up mistakes if you do it at night. Or when it's dark, or when there's yeah, you, smoke in the air and you can't see anything, or or rain, like you said. Yeah, it, it's it's yeah, so because, easy to cover. Yeah. And that's why they do it because you can cut corners on costs, right? You don't have to be as precise. This movie was super precise, and the fact that it lost. And look, First Man, still haven't seen it, but I know 
from you telling me. It's a, it, it it definitely had good visual effects, and I've seen you know I've seen trailers and I've seen clips and stuff, right? But it's not an Infinity War, and I think at the time you kind of argued that it should have it it deserved it, but I but you, we all know in reality Endgame was better, like in terms of that aspect yeah. of it. But guess what? It was a prestige movie, so it won. Um, I think did Endgame? I think Endgame might have won. Did Endgame end up winning visual effects next year? Let's or was see. it no 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 it was nineteen seventeen, right? Hold on. Uh Avengers Endgame Oscars. Because I remember Oh, you know the other thing? It was the sound It won. Was, it won? Okay. It won Best Visual Effects was, in twenty twenty, yeah. Oh no, no, you know what it was? What? Score. It also it never got nominated or won score. Neither of them. I agree. In, hold on. Let's see. 2020 Oscars score. I think it was 1917 one score. If I'm not score, mistaken. Yeah. Joker. Over what? Uh, hold on. No, no, no. no. The year before. Tw- with in Infinity. 20, in 2020, Joker, Joker won best score. Okay. Was it any- makes, makes sense, to be honest. Wait, but was... Am I, like... Done. Was 1917 and Joker same year? Hold on. Let's see. 1917 Oscars. Let's see what they got. Best cinematography. Um. I might just be going crazy. Was it 1917? I thought it was. I might just. 1917. 1917 won best cinematography, best visual effects, and best sound mixing. Which year did it win best win best visual effects? Uh, twenty twenty. So Endgame didn't win. Hold on, I'm con- Oh wait, maybe it was not. Oh, maybe it was just nominated. Okay, yeah, I missed that. I, I missed didn't, don't, didn't think it won. Hold That's. On, I was pretty confident that it didn't win. Didn't win. Twenty twenty. But I remember, Oscars. I made a bet with a T. Or I didn't make a bet. Like I told the teacher, I was like, watch. 1970 is going to somehow find a way to beat Endgame for the visual effects, and yep. I was was you right. Were right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the thing. I, I was pretty sure it didn't win, and then never. Got, and I remember that when it, I think it was Infinity War came out, Star Wars got nominated for sound, even though the 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 the, the, the soundtrack being the same for the last you know seven movies, and yeah. Endgame and Infinity War and Infinity War I guess at the time did it, which was like, okay, I guess. Yeah. Like, Portals, you know, in Endgame, obviously, is, like, top-tier sound. Like, you know, it deserved yeah, to get yeah, nominated at least. That was but, like, sound. that's the thing. This is the differentials in, like, Hollywood has become because of these these people, right? And then suddenly when you want to do something like make a Marvel movie, it looks like it's less prestigious, right? That's where all these narratives start. It starts with the people that people listen to, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or who the people use as examples. You, you see Oscar nominated and suddenly it feels like it's a more cinematic movie than, you know, Avengers Infinity War, right? Yeah. And it's it's just so ridiculous the way that this division is kind of being created and like, oh, there's prestige and then there's other. Well, like, there are bad movies. I'm not saying every movie is awesome or every movie is worth, but like, it's like, there's a very big bias towards certain movies, which appeal yeah. to the general audience. And the Oscars can't decide, and I know this has kind of become an Oscar rant, and I'm sorry about that, but the Oscars can't decide what they want to do. Do they want to, you know, just focus on smaller independent films and just, but then can they really call an award best picture if it's not really about the best movie Mm -hmm. but then or is it going to be more about just in general actually being the best yeah however though in the 2019 oscar black panther did win three awards which is pretty good yes and i think that was very good there were some critical nominations missing including michael b jordan continuing to get snubbed from any sort of victory Despite having many good performances over his career, he was supposed to get nominated for like best supporting actor, eh? Like in, when uh, he Black, lost in, in Black Panther, he should have. Or like when he lost 
uh, the the person who won for Creed should not have won. I know he's your guy, but 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 we all know Michael Jordan deserved that uh, that Creed that Creed Oscar. And Mahershala is, Ali won Best Supporting Actor the year Michael B. Jordan should have won. Well, well yeah, because of the movie. Green Book. But even Mahershala Ali is going to be um, Blade, right? So, Blade, yeah. And obviously, yeah. Um, <laughs> I kind of walked into that one. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no, I, realized, <laughs> I just realized. I just realized. Yeah, I, as I said it, I realized. It's okay. If you, No one knows context. It's fine. It's like oh, okay. Mahershala Ali's no, Blade. We know that. And he's getting a movie. We know that. Yeah. Um, I, I, I walked into that one hard. I, okay. Um, But yeah, the... What was I say? Yes. Um. But yeah, Mahershala is gonna be in a Marvel movie. Like, is that like gonna be? Is that a big deal? Like, you know, is that yes, different? It is. It's a big deal because he's awesome. Yeah, but like, is that like, is that mean he's less prestigious? I don't. I don't think so. Not at all. Not at all. Anyway, uh, enough of the ranting about how Hollywood is split and how it's okay to direct movies if you want to make movies. I guess. Mm-hmm. Who knew that was a good thing? Okay, um, let's talk about more stupid people on the internet because why not? So we're gonna so talk or you want to talk about Spider Man last? We can do Spider Man last. Okay, we'll talk about Eternals. All right. Um. Also, I'm gonna have to just make make note of the order we're doing this in, so I know how to order it on the paper. All right. Um, so while I'm ordering this on the paper, uh, we talked about – what did we talk about first? Ooh, Star Wars. Then we talked about Eternals. Or what we're talking about now. Okay, good. See? Look at this. On the fly editing. Um, what would we – okay, let's talk about Eternals. Um, yes. We'll start with some non-spoiler thoughts. And then we'll talk about some spoiler thoughts. Well, let's, well, you know, typically with the spoiler thoughts, we know we'll try to start at the beginning and then move toward the end instead of starting at the end and moving toward the beginning because we have a habit of just jumping to the end. Um, we'll let's try to start at the beginning. Um, so let's talk about the non spoiler thoughts. Overall, what did you think of this movie? Very good movie. Uh, honestly, that it was, it's a lot of fun. Um, it was most certainly out of the norm for your prototypical MCU movie you're going to see about exploration of power and, you know, um, and yeah, something like that. philosophical questions about life. And philosophical questions about life. Where this was more like, I like the aspects of history, you know, going back to Mesopotamia and Babylon. And um, yeah. that was actually interesting. And overall, great casting, great actors, Angelina Jolie, Richard Madden, Kit Harrington. Um, yeah, fun movie for real. It was, there were a lot of actually the jokes in it were actually really funny, um, and the visual effects were great too. Overall, w- would recommend it for sure. But yeah, what what would you think of it? I mean, I loved it. I remember I walked out of the theater and I was smiling. I was like, I love this. Even before I finished, it was over. I was just so happy because this is the thing. This movie is ambitious in its mm-hmm. in in and of itself, right? What it attempts to do is introduce a whole group of new characters who we have never seen before. A, B, it has to set up a whole aspect of the MCU which we've never heard of before or seen, like unless you know the comic. And even me, okay, being perfectly honest, someone who is is has much more knowledge on this stuff than i do the cosmic side is uh, and a lot of this kind of deeper cosmic stuff isn't my strong suit but i'm not the biggest eternals guy i so i was even going into it although knowing a lot more still didn't know a ton about the eternals and so you had to basically explain these characters like it's a more ambitious version of guardians of the galaxy essentially right Mm, yeah because and the other thing you're doing is you're going over the course of history and time. So you're basically trying to cover the entire history of the MCU, including introducing a whole set of new characters who you have to make the audience care about, and introducing new aspects of the MCU which have never been seen before. And doing that in two and a half hours, 
without feeling draggy, repetitive, boring, or slow. That's very hard to do. Very, yeah. And they pulled it off. The fact that I watched that entire movie, and I kid you not, there was not one point where I was bored or I was like, hmm, you know, I really, you know, I want to just go, I want to just leave now. How much longer is this movie? Like, there was never a point where I was like that the entire time. And despite the fact that it was, and to be honest, like, I, I'm actually more, more likely to do that if it's like a loud action movie, like a Transformers than any, you know, just in general. Um, But, you know, even though it was not a very big kind of like action to action movie, you know, like from action scene to action scene movie. I thought it was still it's there was never a point where I was like I'm bored. Mm-hmm. I was captivated. I loved every second of it. There was some wonkiness with the fight scenes, but that's that's just normal Marvel stuff. So. Yeah. But it was great. I loved yes. it. Yes. Um. Let's talk spoilers. So if you haven't seen it, obviously go watch it. We don't want to spoil it for you. Spoiler um, warning. Spoiler warning, there might be some sort of thing or I'll be lazy and I won't put it in where it'll like, you know, be like a sound bite at some point of like spoilers and go away and stuff. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Ooh, I know there's one I want to. OK, I might have to make some edits to my spoiler compilation because I just thought of a good idea. Um, But yeah, spoilers, yada, yada, yada. You know what there to was... do. I'm... Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so basically, I, one one uh, one twist I liked in the movie was the one in the middle. Spoilers. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Go uh, go away if you. Yeah. Okay. Now yeah, go. Okay, so spoiler warning, but one one twist I actually really liked was to find out that Icarus was the cause of Ajax's death, because he's the one that put, who pushed her off the cliff, and then she was eaten by the deviants, and that was actually a really interesting twist, to be honest. Change the change the story completely. So now I'm going to be perfectly honest here. Although there was some level of me that was suspicious of Icarus, I didn't see that one coming. Mm -hmm. Now, I was someone who saw the James Bond ending coming from a mile and a half away. Uh Uh-huh. Also, at the end, I've got to pitch you my – I've come up with a new plot for 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 James Bond, which I like better, and which I've talked to some Bond fans about, and I'm going to pitch it to you. And I want to hear your thoughts. And right. everyone I pitched it to who's like a deep Bond fan has loved it. As in, as, as in it's like a half-baked plot, but it's already better than what we got. So, um, but yeah, so I'll pitch it to you at the end. Anyways, so stay tuned if you want to hear my Bond pitch. Um, anyways, yeah, so I think, you know, for someone who saw the end of that Bond movie coming, I did not see this coming. I did. I'm, I was suspicious and I was like, maybe, but I did not see this turning out the way it did Mm -hmm. but the what happened though right if you think about it it really did create a very real and moral divide between people and what happened you know it didn't just like it was a better version of captain america civil war and why i say that is captain america civil war was just two con people splitting into two groups and then fighting each other right this wasn't that this was and it was weird. The Im- emotional impact of these characters splitting at the end was more so than the one of Iron Man and Captain America and those guys splitting. Mm-hmm. And I think the reason was Captain America's of War felt very. F- this felt. This felt like it was supposed to happen, and. It wasn't just, okay, we're angry at you and you're angry at us for irrational reasons or rational reasons, whatever. The, because the anger, the distrust was kind of started at the beginning when they when he killed Ajax, right? In, in theory. Hmm. And what happened was over the course of that movie, when, you know, when it happened, you had got a guy like Kingo, right, who was – said – I don't agree with the plan that you guys have to, you know, kill this celestial. But I'm, I'm, but I'm not, I don't believe in it strong enough to do anything about it. So I'm just going to go. Right. Mm -hmm. And as funny as that sounds, it's reality, right? There's not every time is everyone going to believe strongly enough in something to fight it for it. Mm Mm-hmm. And I think showing that kind of divide of 
yeah, I agree with him, but I don't agree enough to, you know, to go fight, right? Yeah. So I'm just going to leave because I have no stake in this. And even the way um, Sprite ended up going with Icarus, right? It wasn't because she necessarily super believed, right? It was more for romantic and jealousy reasons, right? That was the reason she decided to kind of rebel or whatever. Mm. So it and Icarus was more kind of, you know, deep seated. I don't like this. I'm going to be against you. Right. But it was more logical, I guess, because it, it just felt more realistic in terms of the way things happen rather than just Captain America being like, I don't believe I should be controlled by the government. I'm going to fight you now, Iron Man. Right. Like, and Iron Man, like, no, I believe fully in the power of the government, you know, because my character totally believes I should. Because I've never, like, literally humiliated the government on multiple occasions. Mm -hmm. You know, I totally think, you you know what I mean? Like, it's very hard. Like, yes, they do a good, it's a good movie, whatever. But the way this the the divide works in this, I think, is a lot more realistic to the different groups of people that exist and why people do things. And it isn't always just ideological differences, you know? Yeah. Like, if, if, for example... If Wanda and Vision ended up, you know, being on Team Iron Man or Team Cap, right? Because they their own relationship together, or where they said, yeah, we don't really we don't really care about this fighting. We're just gonna go over here and live our lives, right? You, you know, you know what I mean? Like there would be this different dynamic if it didn't feel so kind of scripted to be split apart type things. Mm. You know, for the dramatic, oh my God, Wanda and Vision, they're on different sides now. Oh no! What's gonna happen? You know, it's 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 kind of ridiculous, right? Yeah, so yeah, I mean, I don't know. But what do you think about that kind of aspect of it? Yeah, it was. I I agree with you that it was more of a emotional one where they split up in Eternals. That's why it was better. But um, I'm, I was gonna say something. I forgot. Hold on. Let me. <clears throat> I'm blanking. I don't know. Okay, I was okay. Yeah, okay, I remember. Like part of it. Um, about um, about Icarus. I hope he comes back for another Eternals movie because seeing him go to the sun to commit suicide, like really, you're gonna kill off your best character and your best actor, like for, what for? I don't Come on, think man. he's gone. And we'll talk about this kind of, you know, I guess in a minute, like after you know, after we talk about the movie as a whole, we'll talk about kind of the future of this so, franchise and these characters but i they don't believe say, he's gone they, they did say in the post credits that it's the eternals will be back so i do hope icarus comes back as well I, there's a very very easy way or two very easy ways for them to bring them back and i don't see a world where he doesn't come back now when he comes back and in what form that's a good question you know they have look i'm pretty sure they signed all these guys up to multi-movie deals so mm-hmm. you know hold on let's see uh richard oh richard madden marvel contract yeah i don't know if they'll, okay. they've actually said anything about him specifically but we know some other people do have so um some, uh, uh, it'll be interesting but we'll talk about that in a minute i guess will you look it up see if you find anything but um yeah i mean it, i don't think they're gonna kill him because i think Although it would work if he died, stayed dead, it feels too much like where the story overall is going that he needs to come back. And and it's interesting, right? Because there were a lot of obviously Superman comparisons to him in the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which, it, um, it, the the guy's son, he called him Superman. He was like, "Oh, it's the guy. Your eyes come out of your lasers and you fly." And then Richard Madden's like, "No, I'm not Superman. I'm I'm Icarus, bro. What are you talking about?" And, like, there's this one person on who does stuff on YouTube who is, you know, has her own issues of being certain ways about movies. Said it was disrespectful to DC to do – or di, disrespectful to Marvel to do this. Uh-huh. Or, dis, or disrespect to someone. I don't know how saying – making comparisons in, in a very funny way is disrespectful to anyone, but whatever. Um, but I thought it was very – actually a very well done thing, right? Like, you kind of are – pointing out the meta humor of the fact that he's very similar to superman but in a lot of ways right Mm -hmm. 
The only yeah. reason I think people even are coming up with that Superman comparison is because of how badly DC's done Superman. Mm-hmm. Like, DC has screwed up Superman so much oh, to yeah. the point where oh, you yeah. have this dark, um, you know, twisted character as, as he turns out being. And then people are like, hey, he's the most likable Superman we've ever had, you know, in a while. Yeah. I think that's a problem, right? Mm-hmm. And, it's, you know, it's not like, like if you watch The Boys, the, the, the Amazon Prime show, um, you know, the thing that's very often associated with when you type in comic boys, um, because... Yeah. Have you watched The Boys on Amazon? I have. Is it good? It's so good. you okay. love it. It'd be your show. It's, um, a, it's but, a little, like... What, what's it even about? Like, it, it's about superheroes, but, like, what about them? It's like a dark, dark version of superheroes. With oh, okay. government conspiracies and it, it's your show. It's your kind of show. Are you talking about a political thriller? Because essentially, that is... with superheroes. It's it's a political super thriller with superheroes. Ooh, okay. It's it, it, it's a show which you, you should you should be watching because you it's just a really good show. And then on top of that, it's like your area. It, it's a not a very it's not toned down or anything. It's like. You know, governments controlling superheroes and conspiracies of creating superheroes and, you know, all this different stuff. It, you'd love it. Um, You should watch it for sure. Um, And but yeah, I mean, I think, you know, that Homelander in that show is very is comparable to Icarus, I think, too, in a lot of ways, too. Obviously, also comparable to Superman. But I think the fact that, you know, both those Icarus and Homelander are both much darker characters. Mm hmm. And Superman shouldn't be a dark character, and just the power similarity should not be enough to make that comparison. Although it is funny because, as I say that, at the same time, this was also the best version of Justice League we've ever seen on film. So, you know, they just developed these characters better than Justice League ever did in any version. The four, the four, 34 hours Zack Snyder cut still didn't develop the characters as well as this one two and a half hour movie. So, you know, maybe that speaks to how bad dc is at doing things but Mm -hmm. you know i can't i can't find how long uh richard madden signed with marvel they might not have they might no one might have leaked the details yet but i'm i'm almost 100 percent sure he has got multiple movies Mm -hmm. just because there's no way he doesn't because it makes sense for him to come back um now what did you think about the whole celestial aspect of things and the cosmic side what was the what was the Celestials again? The big um the big robot guy yeah. with like six eyes, and the uh, guy frozen in the ground now. Yeah, that that uh that like visually talking visually about that huge guy frozen in the ground. Holy crap, that guy's massive! Oh my goodness, like to watch that visually on a big screen, like wow, that's that's awesome. That's awesome to look at. But and even the um um the one shot that I loved so much was when was the one where um uh shoot i can't remember his name right now the the main celestial guy and if i i'm sorry if i call them the, call them sentinels at all because i do that for some reason um arshim that's the guy arshim, arshim main yeah. guy mm-hmm. um he, when he comes at the end right to take uh to take you know, all the main characters away that visual of him, you know, in his full kind of form, because it it's one of the first times you see him properly, and then with the Earth like right there, yeah, that was a that, that was, was awesome. a beautiful shot. That, that was, was that like, was awesome. oof, that's beautiful. Yeah, there's a lot of beautiful shots in this, but that was one where it's like, ooh, and it's interesting. I'm just gonna kind of make a little bit of a comic tie here in terms of my very limited knowledge of the comics in, in this regard, at least. Um, so what's interesting is the obviously the Celestials will have a bigger role obviously going forward in the MCU, mm-hmm. right? It's kind of being hinted. We've seen them before. Obviously, nowhere in Guardians of the Galaxy is a Celestial head. Um, obviously, we know from the whatever the flashbacks or whatever in Infinity War or in, or no, in Guardians one that Celestial brought the powers, the, all the Infinity Stones to this universe. But the other thing we know is that the Celestials actually have a rivalry with the Watchers. 
And if you watched What If or Guardians 2, I guess they appeared in 2, right? The Watchers are obviously very passive, right? And we know, again, the one thing What If did really good was kind of explaining the fact that they're passive. They watch. They don't like interfering. Well, the Celestials are all about the interference. You know, they'll love getting in right in there and changing the course as much as they they say, oh, don't do Eternals, don't interfere with humanity. In reality, they're always interfering and they totally are happy to change use their massive power to change the course of history forever so it'll be interesting to see if we get a little bit of a situation between these two people these two groups i guess maybe we can get a spin-off movie like celestials versus watchers spin-off and just go back and like to the beginning of time and then have them like fighting each other that would be awesome Mm -hmm. now the other interesting thing is in the comics and i don't know how much my memory of this because i this is something i've you know, seen briefly, and I don't have much, again, not much knowledge, so I could be completely wrong here. But I believe that when there was one time in a, in one of the in one Loki comic, where a celestial is, I think, killed on Earth, and his body seeps into the ground and creates and gives people power. So now, what group of people could all of a sudden get powers? The Eternals. No, a group of people on Earth getting, let's say, mutations hypothetically. Oh, with the X-Men. Because there is currently a frozen um, a frozen c- celestial in the ground. In the Indian Ocean, yeah. So it's very possible if, you know, some magical power or something from a dead celestial seeps into the water. It could start giving us, you know, a, a, a portion of the population certain abilities, you know, that are not normal for people. You know? Yeah, you know, maybe Ex- some yeah. mind powers, some transformation powers, you know, some, uh, powers. Some blades coming out of your knuckles, you know. Uh, well, there were that. blades, right? Because that was the adamantium afterwards. But some blades, sticks with knives, pointy sticks. Pointy sticks, potato, potato. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, you know, it was maybe turning blue, you know? Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, the ability to control uh, metal, you know, totally. I, I did that one. Already. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the, the ability to um, to go through, walk through walls. Mm-hmm. Maybe yeah. a lot of powers. So, now, what do you think about the acting in this? Oh, it was good. It was actually really good. Um, Angelina Jolie, she was great. Richard Madden, as always, incredible. Um, I was actually uh, kind of surprised to see him maintain his accent. He had in Bodyguard, which is the same one he had in this, but still it sounds good. Je- Gemma Chan, she was... I've never heard of her before, but her performance was good. Um, Brian Tyree Henry, he's um, he's in a TV show I watched called Atlanta. He's like one. Of, he's the main rapper trying to like get to the top, and as always, he was great. Um, also, fun fact about Gemma Chan: she is the first character, or first actor, to be cast in two Marvel roles simultaneously. What was the other one? Because she she's did? also Minerva from Captain Marvel. She was. Yeah. Hold on, I gotta search this up. Yeah, she's the first. I'm pretty sure the first major Marvel character to play two roles who are both the characters, by the way, who are which of are alive at the same time. I think technically, I don't know if Minerva is actually alive anymore. Theoretically, we don't know. I think I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe she is dead. But uh, oh, Doctor Min. Oh, yeah, there yeah. she is. Hold on. Yeah, she's double cast in the MC. That they've run out of act actors, good actors at this point, where they're just kind of having to do double cast people i'm i mean i'm I'm kidding kidding oh oh no she's got blue paint on her face so you can't recognize that she also has such a minor role that you don't really know who she is that's so smart yo marvel be some genius they on genius time you know if they're really looking for a, a specific actor i mean look they might end up doing it with brolin because I would not be against Brolin being Cable in the MCU. Mm-hmm. Thanos, Thanos and Cable. Anyways, I mean, you know, no one's yeah, gonna like, look, no one's gonna be able to tell Brolin was Thanos. That's just that. 
unless you're like searching it up and you're like a pretty big Marvel fanatic like you and me, we would obviously know that John we, we, Rowan, no, Thanos, we'd be fine. We're, no, no issues. Yeah, there. we'd be cool with it. But like the average movie watcher would not be able to differentiate between like, Thanos and Cable. Kind of, obviously, there's similarity because of the motion capture and stuff. But you, could, I think you could totally do it, and and the voice I think is very similar. But you could definitely do it, and no one would notice. Um, and you know, the other option is, hey, if you want another character to come back, you know, there's a certain guy who was the vil- main villain in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume One, who was kind of wasted mm-hmm. because you know he only became a disaster so hey if you know you want to do something like make him oh i don't know arcade or something in the first x-men movie i'm just saying hey, could, just a little uh, suggestion for y'all yeah exactly um but yeah i think marvel marvel doing this is very smart i mean gotta give them a round of applause obviously you're not gonna see robert downey jr cast in two worlds because you know not covered in paint yeah you know no no one no major character but you can of course you can give minor characters big new roles if they, mm-hmm. Especially if they're being covered in paint their entire time. But yeah, I mean, I think you can def. I I don't. I think that's or you could give them new roles if they weren't covered in paint and now they are. Mm-hmm. Right? You can work. You can do that the other way too. Right? You know. Yeah, low key cable. Like Josh Brolin is cable in the MCU. That'd be that'd be awesome. Hey, I mean, it makes oh, sense. Like, about about um another one um the introduction of Thanos's brother. Yes, the end credit scenes. We'll talk about yeah. those in a minute because I want to talk about those in more detail because those are just too good. Also, right. I was that one is spoiled for me, and I'm very angry. I was very disappointed about that. Well, who... Wait, hold on. You went to see it on Thursday, right? Yeah. So how did someone spoil it for you, or how did that happen? So I know someone who's a, who's who who saw it, the the critic screening, whatever. Oh. And they actually told me. I was talking to them about it. And they accidentally told me that it was um, Harry Styles was Thanos' brother. Exactly. Well, they said Eros, and I, so obviously I knew who that. Because I think they they didn't re- realize that that hadn't been like public information yet. So they kind of just said that, and then they realized, and then they were like, and I was like, well, Harry Styles does make sense now. Obviously, Harry Styles makes perfect sense, but uh, we'll get to that in a, in a minute. Um, but you know, just going back to kind of, I guess, the Eternals as a whole. The, I think, I don't know, maybe you may not agree fully with this, but I think this is the best individual story in the entire MCU. What do you mean by individual story? I don't, I don't understand See, that. So that's, there's a lot of caveats to that because mm-hmm. by individual story, I mean a, and it's self, it's the best self, it's self-contained, right? And it's the best self-contained story that doesn't require. Any other, and although Marvel is pretty good at being self-contained, that doesn't require any other kind of, um, you know, knowledge to watch it and like it. Mm-hmm. Right? You, you don't need to know anything else about the MCU to like it, except maybe the general knowledge that Thanos snapped his fingers. And even then, I don't know if you didn't know that how much that would affect things. Um, but not only that, but the individual elements of the story, you know, the, the, the plot of the story. It, it's the best plot, I guess, is the best way mm-hmm. to say it. It's the best self-contained plot in the entire MCU. Just the, the sequence of the story, the way... It, like, the biggest thing, I think, for me is it didn't fall into that normal third-act trap of same-verse-same, punch-punch-punch, kick-kick-kick, or the underdeveloped villain plot, right? Like, it didn't fall into any of those... Norm- or the overdeveloped villain, Right? Because that's the other thing. Because we were talk, we talked about this, a, you know, whatever few, uh, whatever a while ago. Marvel has this tendency now to not not underdevelop their villains, but make their villains too much like a hero, to the mm-hmm. point where they aren't really villains anymore. Where you can hate them, right? We we're talking about this in terms, of, I think, Taskmaster, right? Marvel oh yeah, has in Black Widow, yeah. With the Ghost and Taskmaster and those people to kind of make their villains not real villains, mm-hmm. and just be oh, misunderstood heroes. And this time, they didn't fall into that trap. You hated the villains in this movie. Now, you yeah. can argue who the villains of this movie specifically were in terms of, you know, all those other aspects. But this did feel like one of the better movies in terms of not falling into that trap, not having a big, massive CGI fight at the end. Because there was – the end fight was not CGI-filled, mm-hmm. which is very good, which I'm very happy about. 
Um, I think a lot of Marvel yeah. movies and the final fight isn't CGI filled. And a lot of big action movies in general, right? Like, yeah. You know, there's like, there's a lot of examples of movies, obviously, that are very CGI heavy at the end. And I don't think this one was. Now, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm just not remembering things, but as, as they actually happened, because again, it's been a while, but uh, actually, it's only been like five days, but you know. Um, but you know, it'd be. I think that it's definitely, it definitely felt better than everything else. But yeah, let's talk about the end credit scenes now. Unless you want to say anything else about the movie as a whole or the, anything. Oh yeah, no good good movie for real. Uh, yeah, a lot of fun. Lots of lots of laughs. Lots of jokes. A lot of fun. Very creative. Very different. Ooh, other thing. Remember we were talking about the dinner scene in Black Widow a few days ago. Mhm. Or a few weeks ago, I guess. The Eternals dinner scene, like, is this just a Marvel staple now? Every ki- is this just like a something they should just put it on the contract at this point. Every ensemble cast must have an on-screen family dinner mm-hmm. with some sort of different cultural food each time. Like, yeah. um, I don't know, in Spider-Man No Way Home now, Spider-Man, the three Spider-Men, and Fast some other McDonald's. folks. No, 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 no. They're gonna have yeah, like. Yeah, they gotta do fast. No, 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 no. They're gonna do so. Toby, Andrew, Tom. I don't know who the rest is gonna be, but like, there's oh a bunch God, of people pizza. on the table. Nah. Um. Toby's gotta deliver the pizza. Yes. Oh yeah, the pizza, the pizza, pizza time. He's gotta and deliver the pizza. Guys, like, pizza time. Says, gotta eat pizza. That's what it's gotta if be. Toby Regu- if Toby McGuire says pizza time, in No Way Home, the internet will break. Imagine we said in the trailer that we're going to get soon, hopefully. It's coming up this Monday, apparently. Don't believe everything, every leak in the world, because <laughs> I refuse to believe the existence. Of, I'm going to go. Actually, you know what? Just, I'm going to go straight. I'm going to go for it. I refuse to believe the existence of a second trailer until I see it. Ooh, until you see, like, the title card at the end, at, at the end yeah, of the trailer. Yeah, no, until I've actually seen the whole trailer. <laughs> I'm not believing that there's a, even when it says spider. No, I in do theaters, not. And I do not December believe. 17. I mean, to be honest, they could, if they were smart, they just wouldn't release another trailer. Yeah. And then, and then like, that'd be the only three minutes of footage out of like the two hours we're, we're going to see. And also the, it's funny. If you look at all the photos they've released through magazines and stuff, it's all that one bridge. Yeah, on um, where like Doc Ock and Spider Man are gonna fight. And it's funny, someone released a, a or someone tweeted something, and it was, and I can't give them credit because I don't remember the tweet, but um, it was really funny, and it was like maybe the whole movie just takes place on that one bridge, you know? It just it, you know, the the all the like the courtroom scene is just on Zoom in a car on it, that bridge, and the entire bridge. movie just actually takes place on that one bridge, and I was like. I mean, would that be the craziest thing ever? Like, I know it's a joke, but that would be funny if it just turned out the entire movie took place on the one bridge. Yo, listen to this title from uh, Games Radar. I already love the sound of this title. I love this. Spider-Man No Way Home is not going to be fun. It's going to be brutal. Well, Do you have any exactly. idea Tom how had awesome interview. that sounds? He said, you're going to feel pain and suffering because Spider-Man is going to suffer. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, how much so. awesome, how much more awesome is going to be? Brutal. Any movie that's brutal is already awesome. I think you just want to see Tom Holland suffer. No, I like brutal movies. Just, you know, like, but not only that, Tobey Maguire. But see, brutal, brutal could also have a double meaning because you could argue sitting through certain movies is brutal because you want to peel your eyes out. Yeah. So yeah. And and look, it's not like Sony doesn't have a history of making movies where you want to peel your eyes out. Mm-hmm. I mean, the Emoji Movie existed. <laughs> Don't you dare bring the Emoji Movie into Marvel in the same conversation. Okay, there's there there's levels to this. You got Marvel, which is like all the way at the top, right? And Emoji Movie is like way below. But Sony. <laughs> Also, Morbius looks awful. Oh, uh, oh yeah, that trailer is just... It looks awful. 
And maybe it's just my hatred for Jared Leto, but I'm not excited for that at all. Who's going to watch, watch that movie? I'll watch it, obviously, but I'm not excited to watch it. I'm going to go okay. and say, I don't want to watch this. Imagine if that movie's actually good and, like, you have positive receptions of it. No. No, I it's just never positively. Like, I don't care. I'm not positive. I'll tell you now for a fact that I'm not positively receiving that movie. Even if it's the greatest movie to ever be made, <laughs> I will not. And especially if they shoehorn in Spider-Man characters like from the MCU, I will not. I will hate the movie. I don't even care. I will tell you right now for a fact. No matter how good it is, I will hate it. All right. Oh, the runtime came out for No Way Home. Yeah, two and a half, right? Two and a half. Two, yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay. at this point, just make it guess. It's two and a half, probably. Makes Everything's sense. two and a half. With, like, all the characters that are going to be in there. Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, Tom Remember, Holland. Infinity War was this, like, it's going to be about as long as Infinity War fell. Yeah, or yeah, what, that's true. Right? Like, or Eternals. Or Eternals, exactly. But yeah. look, look how much they, they talk, they, they, you get, like, people forget how much you can do in two and a half hours. Yeah. People are like, oh, two and a half hours too short. Like, that's enough. there's, that's actually there's a time. reason good filmmakers are called good filmmakers. Not because they put together... It's so easy for Zack Snyder to put together a four. I mean, not easy, but it's very, it's much easier for Zack Snyder to put together a four-hour cut of a movie, or a seventeen thousand-hour cut of a movie. I don't know how long. I don't remember how long it was. It feels like it was more than four hours. Um, it's a lot harder to make it a two and a half-hour movie, which covers all that stuff, and is still as good. Zack Snyder's. I gotta see how long this Snyder cut is. Uh, I don't know why I'm just on this hate Zack Snyder hate train right now. Four hours and two minutes. Zack Snyder people are just gonna unfo- uh, unsubscribe. And are gonna start four hours. Oh, and the part also leave the dislikes and oh, Snyder. I don't know. I don't no, know but two why. hours, two hours and thirty minutes is already a good enough time because of the amount of characters you're gonna have in this movie, right? But also remember, like, there is an art to filmmaking. Like, I I'm someone who heavily I hated the fact that Infinity or the end game was three hours. I didn't think it needed to be three hours. I think it wasted half an hour of time. I mm-hmm. think you could have made it just as good. It, actually, you could have made you could have elevated the quality of the movie if you cut down some of the fluff and some of the unneeded things. Because there was so much unneeded things. There were so many tonal changes. You could have cut it. You could have cut probably fifteen to fifteen to thirty minutes off that movie. Yeah. And we, we've talked about this many times, but there's so much stuff. And I think we even did – I think we did an audio commentary on that one. And I think I mentioned where you you could cut things out. You know, there's certain moments where it's like, great, don't really care, don't need this, you know. Some of it's good stuff, some of it's not, you know. Now, the other thing about Eternals actually I want to mention quickly is there was reading at the beginning. And that's – I'm not even going to lie. That scared me. Oh, uh, in Eternals? Yeah. It in scared the me. Now, the reason it scared me was because, at least off my brain, never in a Marvel movie, and I'm, I'm pretty sure in just in reality, never in a Marvel movie have you had to read at the beginning. And I don't know why, but in my head, wait, wait, wait. I saw CinemaSins sitting in this movie saying narration or uh, reading at the beginning. And I was very scared for some reason because I was worried, oh, no, if they're making you read at the beginning – and you're reading a lot of dense concepts, people are just going to get lost. And it turned out to be fine, and I was wrong about that one. But that I'm not going to lie. When I had to read, I was scared because those were they were going to basically try to do a big exposition dump, and it turned out to be good. Wait, I'm trying to think of it, a Marvel movie where there's been a reading at the beginning, but there I can't happened. think of any. Yeah, there's, exactly. There ain't been none. I, I said I don't think so, but I'm... Yeah, there has. Been. Unless I just didn't watch a Marvel movie, which is a possibility, I guess. But I've never had to read before. Like Star Wars is all the time, but that was different, and that was very mm-hmm. unique to it too. Yeah, that's, well, that's, it, that's, in that's, Star Wars, it's a tradition, right? So you're you're obviously going to want to maintain title that. Title card? No, I don't think so. Just the Marvel Studios title, title card because they had the Marvel logo, but then yeah. did they actually have the Eternals like? No. Do they do that anymore? Am I just like dumb? They did it in Endgame last time. Did and they? Black Widow. Did they? Or am I just dumb? I might just be dumb. Sure. No, they did. Last time they did it was in Black Widow, but I don't think they did it in Eternals. They did, did it in Endgame. Did they actually have a title card in Black Widow? I don't. Yeah, they did. Uh, when like there was that trafficking scene. 
on like right in the middle of the screen came up Black Widow. Did they do it for Eternals? I don't think they did. No. Now it could be dumb, and they've only like Black Widow was the only one they did it for. I don't think that was the case, but but because I don't remember them doing it for Endgame, I might just be completely blanking though. Like it's very possible I'm just completely wrong. Okay, anyways, um, we will leave that, and if it comes to me, um, we will talk about that again. But let's talk about the end credit scenes because, you know. Yeah. We, oh yeah. True. 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 So let's talk about the first one first. Yes. Yeah, so we got to see Eros. Thanos' brother. Thanos' brother, Star Fox. I've mm-hmm. said three versions of the same character. Um, this makes sense. People are going to say, oh, he's not green and or purple. I don't know why I said green. Okay. Um, he's not purple. Yeah. It, the way that the whole parentage and stuff works with them and uh, stuff, it all makes sense. Eros has been a, a human? interesting... Interesting part, actually, because I remember the one thing I remember, the one comic I read where Star Fox has been uh, a major part was Kate's um, the Guardian started the Kate's Guardians of the Galaxy run, where it was after Thanos had died. And I believe, if I, again, I might just be completely misremembering, but Star Fox had basically is ba- sent, basically sent all these factions of the Guardians because at this point there's like a bunch of different factions of the Guardians, on to like quests to find things to bring Thanos back to life. I could just be completely misremembering and confusing plots, but I think, or or Thanos' will or something, it was something like that. Um, yeah, it was something, I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, that was that was the thing. And so it would be interesting, because the second he showed up, I was like, okay, guess what? guess where these guys are showing up next? Who? The, these eternal, these uh, some of the Eternals and Star Fox. No way home. Nope. Uh. I gave you a hint in my weird rambly explanation. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, I think. I think this is being set up to have some impact. Because, look, there's only two movies where these Eternals, the main characters, will have any possible chance of showing up. The Marvels and Guardians 3. Mm-hmm. That's it. Those are the only two movies that we know of that where it makes logical sense for the Eternals to show up. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe, maybe if you're stretching it, Ant-Man. But that's it. And I guess, again, if you're stretching it, Doctor Strange and Ant-Man are, like, Doctor Strange and Ant-Man are stretching it possibilities. The logical ones are, of that we, obviously, that we know of exist are, you know, are, are those movies I just said. Other than that, though, there's no other, like, you know, logical place for them to show up. Guardians 3 would be interesting. Cap- the Marvels would be, light, I think, more likely, mm. to be honest. Be, like at least to be more and more involved with the storyline because you know again these are both space movies right yeah movies that take are going to take place primarily probably in space obviously for the marvels we don't know what the hell is going to happen with that one but guardians very likely is going to take place in space so it's very likely that that will be kind of a situation there yeah um and the second post credit scene where um dane whitman the black knight picks up his sword let me hear uh, a suspicious voice. You you thought it was a uh, uh, Marcella Ali's blade. No, no, we know. No, I think. Oh, yeah, it does sound like him, to be honest. Um, she confirmed it. Chloe Zhao confirmed it. It, it, it does sound like him. It, it sounded like like uh, Ali. I didn't know who it was. I just kind of didn't even think about who it was until I saw West that she had confirmed it. Then I was like, oh, that makes sense. Cool. Like, I had no in, no care about who it was, to be honest. I was more excited about the Ebony Blade because that looks awesome. I'm so excited what, for it. Wesley Snipes, not uh, Mahers Lally. <laughs> yeah. Wesley Snipes could end up being in the movie. I hope he does. But then again, everyone, no one likes working with him, so maybe not. Ah. You know who he'd you know be cool? Well, so this is the thing. My thinking, and... You know, I kind of said this in my um, my partial reaction or review, the kind of thing, whatever, of the movie, which ended up being 23 minutes somehow. Um, anyways, um, 
I said at like at some point, like this feels like it's a very weird Midnight Sun setup, right? Like Mid- Midnight Sun, what is that? So essentially, Midnight Suns are like a group of people led by Blade, a group of like dark superheroes, kind of. Mm-hmm. And I feel like Black Knight being kind of like I guess the villain of that, along with like you know, or maybe more maybe a part of the group with like you know guys like let's say a Ghost Rider, or um you know maybe if if Marvel really is interested in this, Morbius comes over right, and you have that, or you know. You've got like Wolverine, let's say, hypothetically. Again, we don't know what the actual group of them are going to look like because, you know, we don't know who the MC is introducing. But it'll it'll be it'll be an that'll be an interesting way to go if you kind of have like this kind of team up situation going on. But Blade make, being involved in be with a guy who has the ebony sword, which is a awesome sword, which can cut through like vibranium, adamantium, and every basically everything with ease, is very very cool. And what? Okay, so what would you like to see happen with this, and with Blade and these guys? Well, obviously, a martial Ali solo Blade movie, obviously, to get himself established yeah. in the MCU. And that, once... I'm assuming the Black Knight will probably show up in that somehow. Yeah, and then once that happens, once you establish Black Knight and Blade, time into you know the Eternals, you know, bring them into a larger group. Do you do that or do you do it kind of do you separate it kind of I guess? No, I'd say bring the two of them in together at the same time into like Eternals two. Because the weird thing, this is the weird thing, right? Which I'm I've kind of been thinking about a lot more recently is what is the MCU's plan? Because it feels like the MCU is setting up, and obviously I know Kevin Feige obviously knows more than I do or you do, but it feels like right now at least from what we can see. It feels like they're setting up for three very distinct stories. Mm-hmm. Now, there's some of them which can – or or actually a little bit more than three, like four distinct stories, right? They're setting up this weird anti-Avengers team with, you know, um, Black Widow and, Ca- and Falcon the Winter Soldier, right? Mm-hmm. They're setting up Kang and kind of that kind of thing with, you know, all the Loki and – um, WandaVision and, um, you know, and, and this kind of multiverse time kind of th- situation with that, which you can kind of, then they're setting up this Judgment Day celestial storyline, yeah. which you can tie obviously into Kang because Kang has had, you know, that all kind of works together. Um, and then, you know, Doctor Strange obviously is by me all kind of tied that. Then now you're kind of also setting up over here. And I'm, I'm putting it now a different place, you know, kind of imp- imply this because people can't see me, so they don't know that. But, you know, you're also kind of setting up then this Blade story, right? Yeah. With the, with this now Black Knight. And it feels very much in my mind like there's three very different stories kind of being set up secretly behind the scenes type things. Well, if you look back at the first kind of, you know, whatever, first few phases of the MCU, that was always very clear. The plot being set up was Thanos. Right. Yeah. There was at least a, the, as well as I again can remember, there was no real setup of another storyline. Completely not new, right? Mm-hmm. Like they kind yeah. of set up Civil War. That was kind of a thing, right? But there was. I feel like these are very three very distinct storylines. Like the because typically the MCU credits end credit scenes would be setting up the next movie or setting up the. Thanos thing. Yeah. That was, yeah, that was your goal. Yeah. And I feel like they never and, and now they're kind of like it feels like like I don't think you either any of these things are like next movie type type things because they're being set up so widely. Like do I th- like obviously you're setting up for Blade, but you're also setting up maybe I guess like we don't even know what's happening. Obviously Eternals will get a sequel, but we don't know when, right? So yeah, it'll be yeah. a long time until we see that, probably. Yeah, they seem and, like at the end of the um, post credit scene that the Eternals are going to return. Yeah, yeah, they'll be back. But the question yeah. is, again, in what <clears throat> form, in, in when, like, because they'll probably return, like we're saying, before their sequel. So then, you know, their sequel gets pushed down because their sequel probably is not coming before, like, a Blade or something like that, which is, you know, imminent, right? It'll probably be three or four years before we even, before we After get Blade. an Eternal sequel. Uh, like, Black Blade. Panther hasn't gotten a sequel yet, 
mm-hmm. you know, so obviously there'd be other issues with that. But e- Eternals, Eternals two after Blade. Yeah, but the question yeah. again is when we don't even know when Blade's coming out, right? Like that's the thing. It's like. Yeah. Oh, we had some hypothesis. Let, let, let's say Blade comes out in 2023, and then while, and then like they can simultaneously like work. Like Blade is in the middle of you know premiering while Eternals is in the works. So that Eternals can come out one year later in 2024. So would you, but then what happened? Like I think the weird thing is we're kind of they've kind of given us three years, which feels like an eternity of movies and TV shows and content. But it's been really given us th- essentially three years of content. Eternity. Eternals. Ah. Uh, nice. See, I, I, nice. I'm so I like good. That. I, just, I, I like that. I like now. that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the, it's very weird because it – and I think the other thing is um, on the 12th on Disney Plus Day when they release their Marvel thing that they're doing. It's Disney Plus Day? On the 12th. It's not On today. the 12th? Yeah. Oh, God. There's going to be a bunch of trailers coming out. Well, so apparently – I don't know how this is working – but apparently what they're doing is they're going to release in the morning at some point, I think 8, 8 a.m. or something. Um, or that's 8 Pacific time. I don't know what time that is here. Um, it's after, yeah, I think it's Los Angeles time because that's where they obviously are. Or... Well, yeah, it's Pacific time, but I just don't know what it's like. I think it's like whatever, 11 or something. Or I guess three, three hours. Or or like Atlanta time because Atlanta is where they film, like, the the production itself happens in all those all their studios i'm pr- I'm pretty sure it's three hours so it's 11 it'll probably be 11 here but i have 11 what, to one or whatever they're going to be releasing, releasing a disney they're releasing a bunch of stuff like m- actual stuff on disney plus and apparently they're releasing like a marvel special where they're going to announce i assume announce things right are they going to it's like a featurette type thing but they're going to have announcements in there. That's what I think it's going to be. I don't know. Because they said they're going to... I have no clue what's going on with that. It's not going to be DC fandom. But it's going to be very, very weird. So they're going to release a lot of content. And then they're going to also like... I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't... I actually don't know what they're doing. But are, if are anything, I think we'll get more out? announcements there is basically what I'm trying to say. Are the trailers coming out on Disney Plus? Or are they going, going to be on the internet? Like on YouTube too? <laughs> that, 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 no. Is this like is it the first time they're doing Disney Plus Day or? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, makes sense. Yeah. I know they've got an investor call like the day before, day after it, so you know that'll probably also be a time for them to announce things. I've got no clue what they're doing. I have no clue what the plan is. I don't. I, I'm 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 in the dark. So I don't like being in the dark, but I am. So you know, I like. What do you think they're doing? What do you think they're setting up? Or what do you think they should be setting up? Spider-Man No Way Home trailer number two. Okay, no, but I mean, like, beyond that, like, when you come, like, the future of the MCU when it comes to these three storylines. Potential, um, I guess, like we mentioned, probably in the, in the announcement of the, another Blade movie, um, Eternal sequel, Black Knight, um, X-Men, remember those X-Men? things that exist. Those have to come give movies too. Yeah, they got to get their own MCU kind of. But yeah, I think. It's and that introduction movies. then will take, you know, be something we'll have to do. We're gonna have to eventually. Disney's gonna say, "Hello, Kevin, we need an Avengers movie. Money, money, money." Wait, wait, wait. Is is the Eternals a start of Phase Four? No, Black Widow. Outline all Phase Four. You you've only had two movies in Phase Four so far. Three. I think. Three. What was the Change. other one? Uh, Shang-Chi, Shang-Chi, right, right, right. Three movies in Phase 4 so far. Also, Most also three off. TV shows. And three TV shows. But I think there were... There well, four TV were, shows, sorry. I forgot about what if. So you had already seven projects in Phase 3, in Phase 4, sorry. I don't care. Just give us more movies. Let's oh, and on. then Hawkeye starts in, um, in two weeks. Two, two weeks? weeks? Ooh. Ooh. It's right toward one of those last two weeks of the month. I think oh, the 26th. Okay. I'm not mistaken. So, wait, that means they're moving. Uh, I don't even know. Yeah. So, and then obviously Spider Man is in December. Yeah, Spider Man's next month. Yeah. And then they pushed everything else back and whatever. But and then the Miss Marvel show is in January. 
Because mm. they moved that back to 2020. We might get a trailer for that on Disney Plus Day. Disney now Disney Plus Day, I assume, will be more TV show based. Yeah, but, yeah, that's where they're going to be releasing their TV shows as well. They're not going to put TV shows. Well, because in it feels like theater. Disney Plus Day is about Disney Plus stuff, and Disney Plus stuff will be the TV shows, not the movies. Mm-hmm. It, it just my hype for Disney Plus. Now, can they drop bomb? Like Secret Invasion is going to be something that's coming out in Disney Plus, right? As a show. Mm-hmm. With Sam Jackson and the Skrulls and stuff and a bunch of other people who are famous. Yeah. But, you know, again, I have no clue what that's setting up because are we going to also set up a Skrull invasion while we're setting up every other thing we're setting up? Like, I don't know what's happening. I'm very – but I'm excited to find out. So that's that. That's a thing. Yeah, this, this November 12th. When, what's the day today? Today is the 9th. Three days. So I think – do you want to leave MCU rankings till like – next time so we have something yeah to next time yeah i say next time because i'm not gonna say next week because i i don't know yeah we can do it next time it's all good um so let's talk about the next thing let's talk about spider-man spider-man no we're going to spider-man and then we can talk about okay all right let's talk about, okay let's talk about partial spider-man stuff Okay, so I want to show you a little something. The, audi- the audience can't see this. I have a pen in my hand. Yes, you do. I got, I got a lawn morality uh, paper here. Actually, no, I'm not going to write on this because I need to study for the exam. Okay. I'm going to use oh, a idea. different paper. Uh-huh. I'm going to use this. Okay. What day is it today? Today is November 9th, okay? November, Tuesday, November 9th. It's 11.57 p.m. Tuesday. On, in 2021. November nine. I, 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 okay, just I'm gonna tell the audience now. Full disclosure, no clue what's going on. Eleven thirty-seven p.m. Alon predicts. Oh, prediction. Okay. Charlie Cox. I don't know if he realizes he can just clip the audio, but <laughs> I'm just writing this on paper for like physical evidence. My prediction, I just clip the audio if I have a prediction, and I'm like, um, or I just don't clip the audio if I have a wrong prediction. Um, damn. Okay. That's the thing about a, pub, of, of, of a public audio feed thing, is that okay. you can just go. clip the audio, and then you can use it to your advantage when you're right, okay. or just hide it when you're wrong. Ladies like, and gentlemen, paper. today... Today is Tuesday, November 29, 2021. It is currently 11.38 p.m. I, Alon, I agree. am currently predicting that in Spider-Man No Way Home, Charlie Cox's Daredevil will be in the movie, and Tom Hardy's Venom will make an appearance. I am establishing this now. This is a prediction I'm going to stick strongly with, and we are going to have to wait until December 17th to see if it's correct. I, hopefully it is. Or they'll put both of them in the trailer. Yeah. Is that a hot take prediction now? Uh, perceive it however you want to. Okay. You know what? I like this game. I'm going to do something, too. All right. Go for it. On I'm Tuesday, gonna, November, yada, this. yada, yada, the, the internet, the, 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 this is very much, you know, this, this, is, this is not edited, obviously. Um, probably should be, but isn't. Um, I'm going to make the prediction that Tom the, the, that Daredevil will not be in this movie. Dare, okay, hold on. I'll, I'll write it down so that we have an, an account of it. I don't it. Around, so I can't do it. I don't know. Okay. It's Tuesday, November 9th, 11.39 p.m. <laughs> and I'm going to make the real bold prediction here. Ooh. Charlie Cox's Daredevil will not show up in the movie. Carl says Charlie Oh, Charlie Cox Daredevil will and not be in no way home. And oh. and further that Further, although more. there will be 
a few surprise cameos. Although... Andrew okay. Garfield's Spider-Man will not be one of them. Oh, 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 that's a hot, that's a hot, hot take. Yeah. Andrew Garfield. And specifically Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man. Spider-Man will not be in. Now I need to, I need to clear, I need to add a little bit of context to this, okay? I'm okay. not saying Andrew Garfield will not appear in the movie, nor am I saying well, he will not appear in the movie as Spider-Man. I'm saying the Spider-Man from the, the, from the Amazing Spider-Man universe played by Andrew Garfield will not show up in the movie. And further, further, um, the, Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man will also not... No, Actually, you know what? I'm going to make this even bigger. No character... Even in, in, even including Doc Ock, is from the either the the original Spider-Man Tom, Tom, Tom Maguire universe or the Amazing Spider-Man universe. Even like oh okay all right I'll write that down. None of them. They no. are they are now. Well, could Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield both show up as Spider-Man? Of course, but they will not be the Spider-Man from those movies right they will not be the same spider-man will we'll, it's obviously doc ock is showing up we saw green goblin in the poster um oh yeah Will, willem defoe is going to be there for sure well we saw his suit in the poster right um yeah. the but they will not be the people from those movies they will just be happen to be played by those people now this could be a very wrong it's very likely to be a very wrong prediction or i could be surprisingly onto something that completely that no one saw coming because you know i don't know if i'm right, right i will i will not only clip this but i'm not even kidding this will be the greatest accomplishment of my entire life if i predict correctly the outcome of this movie because i think there's a legitimate chance that there's all this stuff about okay yes they're in this movie but they aren't really the one the characters from that universe they're just because people are making the jump well, they must be in it because multiverse. But what if they're in it, but it's not necessarily – it could still be multiverse related, but maybe it isn't from – because – and I feel like there will be some ambi- ambiguity when it happens. So I feel like there will be an argument for me that I was right, but um, that's just a hunch. No no actual information. I, don't feel I got like. some predictions right here. This is – this paper right here, I wrote your prediction where you said very, like – Very long, detailed. There's a lot of caveats and asterisks. Or like, Toby, I don't know. Toby and Andrew will not be the Spider-Man. Uh, no character shown will be in No Way Home, like uh, uh, Alfred Molina. And because uh, uh, remember uh, what I'm saying, Alfred Molina, we know he's in the movie. We know Willem Dafoe's in the movie. We know they're playing Green Goblin and Doc Ock respectively, right? But they're not gonna be playing them from those movies, right? Like they will not be continuations of those characters. Oh, okay. All right. Let me let I'm me get at that. Uh, let, me, let me fix that. Obviously, I'm not. I'm not saying okay. It's all fake and it's not all like you know. They're not in this movie. I do believe they are, but I don't believe they're from those universes. Like mm-hmm. if Tobey Maguire appears as Spider-Man, he may be from a different universe, but he will not be from the original Tobey Maguire Peter Parker universe. Okay, from I see what you. Okay. So that's the thing, and I think this is, might be a. I don't know if it's a hot. T- I think it's a hot take because average is a stupid. Very sizzling, like. Yeah, hotter than I don't know why we just assume like okay, Tobey Maguire is in it, and therefore it must be him from that movie. Like, what if Tobey Maguire turns out to be a guy who delivers pizza and dresses up like Spider-Man just for fun, or a squirrel, or you might maybe that one will be the okay. <laughs> Based on what they did in Far From Home, that would be. It'd be funny if that was the one thing we got that you got right. It was like, oh, the scrolls. <laughs> I think you should stand by that. The no, no, Doctor Strange and the entire cast is a scroll. The only person who's real is Peter Parker. No, no. So you know, in the um, at the end when Nick Fury's on that beach, right? It's a simulation of a beach. Yeah. The entire movie is a simulation. Mm-hmm. Peter's just in a simulation the entire time. And like he was being surrounded by scrolls that entire time too. 
No, he's just on some space station somewhere in his own in in and nothing in the movie really happened. Yeah. It was all okay. to teach him a lesson about it was all it, it turns out he was in a prison and they put him in there in, in this world as punishment to make him feel pain and suffering as a form of torture. <laughs> That's some serious psychological torture there. Yeah. I'm basically ripping off the plot of Batman Arkham Asylum. Arkham, Arkham Asylum. All right. Whatever. We'll go with it. We'll go. We'll roll with it. So. That would be funny though. That would be some meta trippy stuff, but that would be funny. Ta- okay, that would be that would be the most funny thing to happen is if they put him through a simulation to make him feel pain and torture, to punish him and teach him a lesson about responsibility and great power. The entire MCU is really just being a simulation, and Peter Parker's being the only real character. That'd be that that would change the MCU forever and the way we watch it if that's actually true. <laughs> that would be so funny. No, no, no. The MCU is all fake. Kevin Feige shows up, and it's his and simulation. He breaks the fourth wall and he says, "Oh, hey, it's fake." And then the end credits roll. And then the MCU is over. Yeah. It turns out every movie after Far From Home is a hoax. It isn't real. All right. So, is your prediction? <laughs> I don't right know here. what we've gone on to. This is is your prediction right here. All right. This is mine. I'm gonna put these together. I'm going to store them up here. We're coming back to this after we see No Way Home. It's it's in a safe place. Also, also the audio exists, but, you know, for proof. <laughs> for physical proof. Yeah. But, yeah, Spider-Man, that's yeah. going to be a good movie, probably. Or it won't be able to destroy the MCU, and now I'm thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> December 17th, folks. The MCU will be destroyed. Yeah. Also, can we just clarify something, just so, we, just so people on the internet know? Mm-hmm. Despite what certain YouTubers say, VFX teams don't edit trailers. That is true. There's a reason. So I'm actually I'm gonna read you this tweet. It's from a source. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave all the 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 like you know. Um, I'm gonna leave the source name out. I'm gonna put, obviously say the account name, but because I don't want to call out somebody. Um, so it's binge watch this. So the ad is at binge watch this underscore. The delay on the next Spider-Man No Way Home trailer is reportedly due to the VFX team worrying that they may not finish the film on time for release and can't even think about editing a trailer right now. So, okay, this movie's coming out in December, December 17th. That's in about a month and eight days. Oh, wow. It's actually pretty close. But really, like... Okay, how many things are wrong with that tweet? What's that? How many things are wrong with that tweet? Probably a lot. Yes. So, A, the the way this tweet frames it is that the VFX team is sitting here in a circle, basically saying, I don't know if we're going to be able to time. I'm very worried about that. A, that's A. B, because like you know, there's like, they can't even think about editing. Like it's very dramatic. Um, B, the they don't edit the trailer. The VFX team does the v- VFX, and then mm. the editing team does the trailer. Edit. It's very different things. C, the if 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 the real comment is the VFX footage for the trailer isn't finished, well. Then you know they would, they would, they would, they would, they have ways of doing that. They also have no, they, it's also not like the craziest thing for unfinished VFX to be used in a trailer. That that's the third part of this, and 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 I guess the fourth part of this is. Yeah. Which I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if there's a fourth part of this, but basically it's a very wrong tweet. Don't listen to stupid people who say stupid things. If it looks fake, it's probably fake. I'll be, I'll be back. You continue. Yes, I will continue. Don't worry. I will talk to you back. Um, and I think that you know, like it, it, it is, it, and it is a kind of a disappointing thing when people start using kind of this, this, this fake narrative to try to, you know, push things. Um, oh, um, the 
Yeah, but it's it's very interesting when you you try to push things um, that aren't true, and you know when you intentionally try to mislead people. And I got distracted and stopped talking for a second, but um, you know, I think it's very interesting for um, you know, when people kind of start believing this stuff, and it becomes a problem when major people pick up on people like on sources that aren't actually accurate. And so I, I don't know, I think that it's very, I, I don't know, I think, I just think it's a very weird situation, but, uh, yeah, but yeah, but that's the thing, it's a very weird situation, and it's all, like, that tweet I already had was all false. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to very, very much, um... What was I saying? Saying something. This is the point where I like to stop talking. But I can't. Oh wait, I can stop talking now. Yay. I'm gonna pretend I know. I think I just said like about. a lot of the same thing for a good five minutes because see this thing. So I was, I was whatever talking and I was like we don't want this roll and then because it was on Twitter the notification popped up saying they suspended Jokic for a game and they uh. find Jimmy Butler and. They suspended Morris for a game, and now I'm, like, distracted, and I then forgot what I was saying, and then it just became a snowball rolling down a hill. Even Honestly, though Jokic, Jokic, um, Jokic should not be suspended, to be honest. He was right. This is all, like, this is a systematic problem from the NBA. I'm going to go on two rants about how things are systematic from the NBA or the Oscars. This is, this is, this is becoming a weird show. Um... Wait, has was Morris not suspended? Was he just fined? Jimmy Butler's fine too, which is nice. I was surprised Tyler. It's funny. Someone there's another tweet where it's like, because there's like that picture of Tyler Hero in front of you, and this relates to comics, I promise. Um, Tyler Hero relate is like in front of Jokic, and someone yeah. tweets like, um, you know, oh please don't Tyler Hero telling Jokic, oh please don't please don't do that. That's not very nice. And not even kidding. When I was reading that, I read it with Tom Holland's voice oh. in my head of Peter Parker. You can tell me you don't you don't see that you don't hear that in your head when you hear yeah. see something like like a picture of like Tyler Hero standing like in front of like Big Jokic who just like you know pushed over Markeith Morris and Tyler Hero there standing saying something in 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 Tom Holland's Peter Parker voice. Oh, sir, please don't do that. That's not very nice. Honestly, I got Jokic. Um, beating the entire Miami Heat roster in a fight. Oh, for sure. Oh, Easily. Jokic's brothers beat the... But yeah, that that's that, yeah. Uh, anyways, I, I I I don't I don't I don't know. Yeah, it, it, for Jokic. Um. Okay, next. Do you want to hear my James Bond pitch? Yes. Okay. And I know we're gonna have to like wrap it up at some point, but you know, right now James Bond, very important. And then we'll do box office and some other stuff. Um Okay, so this is very again, half baked, very like, you know, not thought out, and it could be thought out, and I'm sure if I thought it out, it would be very good. So this kind of relates to what I I was we were talking about kind of initially when we heard about Bond and the theoretical idea. So what if Bond was so it turned they kind of con- they kind of did what they wanted to I guess do which is kind of connect the Bond movies together right and mm-hmm. what they did was they actually kind of ended up reveal and there's might be some spoilers for Bond the new one whatever No Time to Die so you know if you haven't seen that go watch it and then come back I guess I don't know um but what if they had it so that they revealed essentially like you know through uh, death or something that James Bond was never actually one person, but instead like there was a, this, like, a big government conspiracy where every time a bond died, they would kind of create a bot program or something, take someone and program them to be James Bond essentially. And the reason they would do this, right. Besides being morally corrupt and all the usual stuff, the government is right. Is because James Bond is a scary idea to, to people, right? Like if you're a bad guy, right. The the idea of James Bond is very scary to you. Yeah. Right. And and what it become what James Bond then can become or that movie could have become was 
Daniel Craig kind of figuring this out and realizing, you know, because and it kind of does kind of tie back to that idea of James Bond not being a number or not being like a person necessarily, right? Like one individual person. And what it allows it to do is kind of say, kind of be, again, its own story. But it also allows James Bond to be the super spy, right? Yeah. And do a lot more of those super spy things rather than being the action star, which I know was your big issue with the movie was action star versus super spy, right? You know, your comment of the suit thing makes more more sense now, right, in terms of that mm-hmm. idea of super spy, right? And it would allow for James Bond to kind of be a little bit more of that spy than it was than an action hero, right? Where he kind of is going through this kind of government conspiracy and realizing what's going on and I feel like it would fit a little bit better as a send off to an extent. And I don't know how you end it or whatever. Uh, I, I, again, not, it's a very half baked, but the idea of, you know, all these bonds just basically being the government needing a James Bond and, and, and every, and, you know, James Bond is always doing dangerous stuff and eventually, and eventually ends up dying. And because obviously it's unrealistic to assume he's just keeps surviving. And the reason James Bond can always exists but has different faces since the beginning of time is because it's never been the same person it just being someone who's being kidnapped by the government and program essentially brainwashed or programmed to be james bond because without james bond you know the criminal underworld let's say theoretically would go crazy because there would be nothing they wouldn't be scared of anybody sounds a little too jason bourne-ish does it though? Because I think I don't know. I feel like there's a way to do it where it works. I don't know. I think it's better. I think it would be more true to James Bond than what we got. It's it's good, but it's just a little little too Jason Bourneish with a little programming and brainwashing thing. Because that's like, what they're. Again, I don't know how that would ha- like. I don't really know how the whole thing would work. But it feels like the dynamic between the government and you know MI6 and James Bond, like. The way they kind of treat him, it feels like it would work and it would be realistic, right? And it kind of like it's not like it's a very unreal like the government not valuing the a human life and you know not caring about morality and stuff is that the craziest concept in the world? Probably not. Um, it, definitely not. Um, you know, like I don't know. I think it would be. I think it would be more. It would be closer way to do what they wanted to do but also be a little bit more james bondy uh like like i said it's a little too jason bornish but like is it better than what we got it is better than what we got but people want james bond for an action star you know like they want to see james bond wearing suits and shaken, not stirred, and you know, with pretty women and in fancy in fancy cars and fancy places, and they want to see him like do that and take on, you know, like independent of you know MI6, just do his thing. But MI6 is kind of connected to his character. Yeah. But I don't. Know, I think that would be an interesting thing, right? Because. I, because I think their uh, intention, at least, was they wanted to kind of partially connect all the James Bonds. Now, they did that by killing him, but they wanted to kind of connect them and, you know, because that, I remember we were talking about this. The initial thing is the idea of this was the big kind of connecting of all the James Bond. And I don't know, I feel like that was that would connect them a little bit better, but also be its own kind of story and also not be too pandery, I guess. Yeah. Like pandery to the general audience over the typical james bond fan i think it'd be a better balance i think in no time to die talking specifically the first scene in italy it could have set up such a better story you know can bond trust his girlfriend because now he finds out that she's working with specter so i think if they did that throughout the entire movie that if he can trust her like you know um, that that could have been the conflict in the movie, and that could have been a great story. But I don't know why they didn't continue with that because the first scene was great. But then to continue with that, can Bond trust his girlfriend? Can Bond trust anyone? Can he even trust MI6, his own people? Yeah, I mean, yeah. And then, like yeah. to have those internal conflicts within within himself about trust, who to trust and who not to. 
I definitely see that. I think that the yeah, but I, I, I now I understand after I've talked to a bunch more people who've kind of been like Bond fans who haven't loved it. So far, every Bond fan I've talked to has not loved it. Mm-hmm. I've I really enjoyed it, but maybe it's also because I'm not as connected to the character. But so I because and now that I've kind of talked to a bunch of Bond fans, and they've all kind of been like, yeah, it was good, or some of them are saying just flat out bad. But like I think you said, yeah, it was good, but it it was not James Bond. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, it's just this, this I guess, habit of trying to make it a cinematic universe, right? Mm-hmm. You're trying to set up James Bond spinoffs, and you're trying to set up a big James Bond cinematic universe and the all this stuff. And, but people, people you, you don't want this guy to be just – you want it to be just J- James Bond being James Bond and doing stories mm. and it being relatively disconnected. And if, you know – and I think something like a government conspiracy of some sort, right, like that, would be a cool way to kind of connect, but also leave it as its own story, you know? Mm-hmm. Also, whichever James Bonds are still alive, you can bring for cameos, which would not be a bad thing. Uh, I don't Pierce, know how many of them are alive still. Pierce Brosnan. Uh, Is that it? Not, no longer Roger Moore, no longer Sean Connery. Yeah. Um, Plus, I'm sure you have deleted footage. Yeah, D- Daniel Craig's dead. His bond Daniel is Craig's dead. Daniel Craig's not dead. No, 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 his bond. Or maybe even uh, Timothy Dalton. Why well, uh, more whichever bonds are, whichever actors are not dead? I mean, like. Yeah, Timothy Dalton. Um, Pierce Brosnan, those guys. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I think that that was the one thing I wanted to pitch to you was that because I thought that was like I was thinking about that and that was kind of like my idea of like what they wanted to do versus what they did. Also, I I, I don't remember what was your thoughts on the Billie Eilish. You didn't like the Billie Eilish theme, right? After I saw it in the movie with the actual like se- opening sequence of it, it was much better. Did you did you like? Because the other thing I heard was that this movie was very much like the thing about the Feel like I even though it fit tonally, it didn't feel as cinematic or orchestraic as like the Adele theme or Adele or Sam Smith. Exactly, those were much more big themes. They were. This was much. And, it felt like a lot more of a depressed theme, which made sense obviously with the movie, but wasn't again James Bond. Mm-hmm. And and Skyfall by Adele and Writings on the Wall by Sam Smith are by far the best Daniel Craig James Bond songs. But as soon as you Skyfall see was like the best one, yeah. Skyfall is the best one, and then it, writing's on the walls up there too. But as soon as like you'll see "No Time to Die" by Billie Eilish with the opening credits, you'll you you'll you'll enjoy it. Yeah, I I thought it made sense with the tone, but I understand also not liking it because it does it is less much less than you know that usual cinematic kind of big orchestra kind of you know James Bond theme. But yeah, you know, mm-hmm. we've talked about James Bond. There's a podcast episode where we talk about it. Go check that out if you want to hear our thoughts on it. Look at mm-hmm. our plugging ourselves. It's great. Um, let's. Do, 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 do. Hmm. Okay, the two, two, two roots. Do you want to talk box office quickly? Yeah, let's do box office. Okay. Um, we haven't done one in a while. Mm-hmm. So if you. So I know you have the one, whatever. I don't think we actually did an eternal. When did was the last week we did it? Uh, hold on, let me check. When we'll just do it again for I guess next week now, right? Uh, let's we'll see. The week that we last did. Uh, that the last time we did it was when No Time to Die came out. Really? Yeah. I thought we did one. And I said, let's skip the week. Let's go to right to Eternals or Dune or something. Mm-hmm. Eternals made 71 million. It did. Yeah, that's pretty good. Big win. Yeah. Especially considering half the major markets in the world won't release it because of a kiss. China. Oh, yeah, China. And <laughs> Saudi. Joke. And Saudi Arabia. And yeah. And like all those countries over in, in the middle 
and Russia. And Russia, yeah. Also, wait. Oh, God. Going back to Eternals, the first Marvel sex scene that was interesting. Wait, hold on. If countries in the Middle East banned it, did hold on. I gotta see if if Israel is on that list too, because there, it, Israel is completely different from all its neighbors. Well, at, at the Middle Kingdom, I guess would be with the you know the the Dubai and the Qatar and all those places. Eternals banned in Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and Kuwait. Yeah. What countries banned Eternals? The Russia Eternals probably did. China probably did. Russia, yeah, China. No, I don't see Israel. Israel wouldn't. I don't think would. No, they wouldn't. They're they're much different. They're more. Um, they're much more progressive. They're, yeah, they're more classical liberal than their their yeah. neighbors. Especially with the new regimes. The more recent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, All right, box office. Box office. That's what we were talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so first, so what week was it? Uh, October seventeenth is what it says here. Really, I feel like it was before. I feel like we made one after that. Yeah. Um, weekend. Fifteen. Actually, no. Fifteen to seventeen makes sense. No, it was after No Time to Thank You, know. hmm Okay, so what was the thing? I'll tell you what it was. Okay, so you said Halloween Kills, No Time to Die, Venom, The Last Duel, and The Addams Family 2. I swear to God, I hate everything. Okay, what do you think? <laughs> Wait, how many did you get right? All five of them were there. The last two were switched. Oh, we're just on the cusp. What'd you just- do? A uh, No Time to Die number one, Halloween Kills ah. two, The Last Duel three, Venom four, and Adam's Family five. Yeah, you got them all wrong. Damn it! I so I I I won. So that's over okay. five. Let's go over five, gang. Hey, we are sad. Well, don't worry. You're gonna you might win next. Time. Although to be fair, you have been killing me in these. You know, re, like you know, besides that I've been, last. One. I've been slacking. So. I've been I've been struggling lately. So la- this week, the fifth to seventh, Eternals was one. Mm-hmm. Dune was two. Oh, was, yeah. Eternals was one with seventy-one million. Uh, Dune was two with seven million. So you can see the big difference. The No Time to Die was three with six million. Venom: Let There Be Carnage was fourth with um, four million. And five was Ron's Gone Wrong with three million. Mm-hmm. So. Next week, right, which would Yo, be what's going, the what's going on weekend next week? of what, what weekend's next? I don't know. Do you know what weekend's next? Uh, Wednesday, November. Oh, wait, okay, we can just take Friday, November 12th. I didn't need the day. Movies coming out. Friday. Okay, Bell's I don't know. I just need to know the weekend. Cause the only movie is. Okay, here it is. The weekend of the twelfth to the fifteenth to the fourteenth. Mm-hmm. Twelve to fourteen. It's just okay. Belfast. That's it. Hmm. Belfast. That's the only wide no. release. That's not the one. That's next weekend. Friday, November twelfth. Oh. Are we doing November twelfth or November sixteenth? We have to remember there's a random movie, random tenth tenth release too. A movie, a kids movie, which always ends up doing well. Wait, so were you in um? Yes, you're right. Belfast. The so there's two wide releases: Clifford today, on Wednesday, mm-hmm. and Belfast on. And Belfast on. Right. Yeah. Now remember, do never, uh, never underestimate the power of a kids movie. Oh yeah, Clifford. Clifford can actually probably be Eternals. We the one did no. Um, the one downfall you've always had in these is you always underestimate the kids' movies. Yeah. You always underestimate them. I never the Adam Family I remember was a big one where the first week it came out, you were like, ah, it's gonna do nothing. End up being one or two. You always you forget the power of kids going to the movie theaters on the weekends. Yeah, yeah. You and cannot never underestimate now. The big question obviously will be 
what's Eternals drop off? I don't think it's going to drop off. I think it's going to But gonna then scale. again, Clifford. Now, the other thing about Clifford, full disclosure, is Clifford does release also on Paramount Plus, so that might affect something, or it might not. We don't know. Um, Eternals okay. only made $71 million in its first weekend. That is a lot of money. Yeah. So that's also something to take into consideration. So, okay, you go first. Okay, all right. Number one, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Clifford, the big red dog. Big Whatever. bold move. The big boy. The did big did you see that another big bold move, Clifford, the big red dog? I'm fine. The big, the big bold red dog. Yes. Yeah. All right. Number two, I'm gonna go with the Eternals. That goes you think the Eternals are gonna be eaten by the big? I'm trying to think of like. A, 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 like a headline. When All right. Eternals beat Clifford. Clifford the Big Red Dog stomps all over the Eternals. There we go. I did it. I'm so good. They should just hire me to make their headlines. I'd be very good at it. Mm. Clifford the Big Red Dog steps all over Eternals for its massive 60 million box office debut. Yes, indeed. Okay. Uh. Or choose up Eternals. Okay. All right. I got I my list. Clifford, don't I? I got my list. I don't want to watch Clifford. I'm trying to decide with myself if I should watch Clifford. Um, I'm probably not going to do it. Let's be honest. Okay. What are your read yours out? Sorry. Okay. I got Clifford, The Eternals, Belfast, Dune, and James Bond. Okay. I think Belfast. I think Belfast is going to be. Pretty you also good. over always. Either overestimate or I underestimate those movies, like Belfast. I don't know which one it is. Okay. I think Belfast is going to do good. I mean, it's going to make more than, like, whatever the drop-off of Dune is from Seven. Mm-hmm. So, does it make, let's say, let's say, just assume Belfast. Does Dune make, does Belfast make Seven or more is the question. More. It's going to make more, for sure. And then the question is, you know, when you're a person going to the movies, if you haven't seen Eternals but Belfast is out, what are you choosing? Are you choosing Eternals or are you choosing Belfast? You're probably choosing Eternals, mm-hmm. right? Like if, yeah, you go, if you only go to the movie once, right? And sometimes, and remember, right, because you the thing you have to look at, obviously, when you do this, and I'm acting like there's a big science to this, which I guess technically there is, but it's not like we actually care, and I just name things. But you've got to think about it, because I don't know why I'm saying this, but, like, you got to think about it, like, if you're going to the movies once in a month and there's a big blockbuster like Eternals and then there's something like Dune and No Time to Die, is Belfast really on your list? And how high is it for that month, right? Because obviously people can't go to the movies every single weekend to watch like 700 movies, right? Mm. So by the time Belfast comes around toward the end of the month, is 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 that is that are people less people seeing it? Again, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I think Bel. Actually, you know what? Write it down. Belfast, two million. Uh, Two ish million. Cause why not? All right. Nice. Um, awesome. Okay, mine. Number one. Mm-hmm. Eternals. Eternals. Oh, you're underestimating now the the kids movies. I'm not understanding the kids movie. I'm overestimating. I'm I'm I know that the hybrid streaming will be a thing that'll affect it. I know Eternals is just not gonna have as big of a drop off. And I know Clifford will not make over like 30 million. So All right. if if Eternals drops to as maybe under 30 million, there's a problem. And if Clifford makes over 30 million, there's also a problem. So you think uh, Icarus is going to destroy with his laser eyes Clifford the big red dog? No, I had to land in the center. <laughs> the Eternals outlive. <laughs> there we go. I was like, look at that one. Okay, look. <laughs> Just hire me to do your headlines. I'm very good at this. Um, anyways, yeah, so Eternals number one, Clifford number two, because I don't see Clifford making over 30, being generous. Number three? We'll watch Clifford make a hundred million opening weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I will th- if Cl- okay, I'm gonna make a if Clifford makes over 70 million, which is what Eternals made approximately. On opening weekend, okay, I will come on here, okay, and apologize. I will apologize, and then 
I will not talk for 20 straight minutes. <laughs> It'll be just you for 20 straight minutes. I will right. say a word. I will sit here quietly listening. Okay. I don't know if this is a punishment. I don't know who the punishment here is too, but I will sit here for 20 straight. Actually, no, 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 no. We've got to do some math. Hold on. Uh-oh. I know this is, you know, whatever. Um, I don't know what math I'm doing, but. Uh, yeah, I'm just, I'll, I'll sit here for 20 minutes. I was going to say 70 minutes because 70 million, but uh, that's too long. So <laughs> I'll sit here for 20 minutes. And I want to right. I don't know if this is a punishment to you because you're going to talk for 20 minutes straight, but um, I'll do it. Okay. All right. So that... All right. What's your uh, what's your third and, prediction? And I feel like now, anyways, yes, finish. I'm going to finish this. Now, because yeah. I'm getting distracted. I keep getting distracted, I swear. Um, Eternals, Clifford, it, 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 no time to die. What do you say third? Uh, Belfast. Right. Dune, and then Ron has gone wrong. Damn, so Belfast isn't even in your top five? No, I told you, Belfast, three million. Or two million, I said. Right? Two million, but you don't think it's going to be, like, uh, top five in, like... No, Ron has gone wrong went dropped 4.6%, and it made three. I'm just going to mm. assume it doesn't drop that much going forward. Uh, I, but then again, actually, the kids market would be very dissolved because of Clifford. Mm -hmm. Fine, Venom. Venom? Okay. All right. Wait, so what, what, read me my list pack. Okay, so you got Eternals, Clifford, Bond, Dune, Venom. Okay, that's good. All right. Look at these percentages. It makes Right, Belfast six. will probably be somewhere in the top 10. Damn, see, he's like, all right, fair enough, fair enough. It, it could make 3 million. I'll give it that. It, it, there's, wait, you know what? Actually, I'm, I'm going to do Hold on. I might want to alter my prediction a little bit. Actually, no, I'm going to change my prediction. I'm going to change it. Throw Belfast in at the end for five. five? And I'm going to say 4 million. Okay more realistic got him like th somewhere between three and four i'm very now i'm getting nervous my prediction. okay i'm staying between three and four okay all right yeah i'm staying between three and four. okay nice okay okay i'm just prepared for the fact that i might not talk for 20 straight minutes okay. um you better. <laughs> I feel like you're just gonna go and watch Clifford on repeat, just to just to single-handedly make it hit the. Even worse. Yeah, just you're gonna just start becoming the cl biggest Clifford. I don't know. Like, does this benefit you, or is it just a punishment for you and not for me, or is it a punishment I, for me? It it, it doesn't matter to me to be honest, but like the question is, is it a punishment for you, or is it a, a reward for you? It, it's a punishment for me. <laughs> You know, I'm going to talk for 20 straight minutes. I've never done that before in my life. I'll, I'll um, put on a timer for you if it does happen. Well, I'll see the timer when we're recording, right? But, oh, yeah, true, true, true. Yeah, it'll be a punishment for me for sure. The question is, is it a reward for you? Because I will not be, you hope, I will not be able to not talk for 20 straight minutes. I mean, I'll have to, but, you know, that'll be very difficult. Because um, as you know, I like talking. Which, yeah. I'm very scared that this movie is now going to make a lot of money. Uh, well, we'll, well, just have all to I know see. is I'm not watching Clifford opening weekend because <laughs> she was all not uh, letting it contribute to my my possible 20 minutes of silence. Uh, all right, it, well it we got makes more than 70 though. Actually, you know what? We'll change that. Maybe it'll make. I don't think it'll be more. If it's one, if it beats Eternals, I'll I won't talk for 20 minutes. Okay. That's how confident I also am in the fact that Eternals will not lose to Clifford. Okay. Sounds good. Also, the other thing I'm thinking about is, A, obviously the hybrid release. But also, Clifford releases on Wednesday, not Friday. 
Mm-hmm. So in theory, there's a chance that people who want to watch it somehow after school, I guess, as kids would watch it. I don't know how that works. Do people do that? I don't know. And to, oh wait, today is Wednesday now, so it's coming out. Today, today. Yeah. And also, I don't know. Does that? I don't think that counts towards general weekend box office, obviously, because it's not a weekend. But so then, you know, does that take away enough? And if that's the reason, you know, the difference. I don't know. Maybe I'll be wrong, and I'll be sitting here for 20 minutes straight quietly. But if not, you know, who knows? But yeah, that I think that's it. Also, I watched um 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 what's the movie called? Last night in Soho. How was it? It was so good. True. I loved it. What's it, was, it even about? It's very hard to describe, so I'm not gonna try. But it's good. Oh, okay. Uh, but I'm not even kidding. So I watched Eternals Thursday, like midnight, right? Yeah. So I got home at like two. 140 i don't know i think i watched it turns actually at, i think the show was at 10 go home at like 140 ish mm-hmm. and then the next day i was back at the same theater at one o'clock for like in the afternoon for to watch last night in soho it was good like you you enjoyed it yeah, yeah, it was good. I loved it. All right, good to know, good to know. And the other thing, which, you know, because clearly two hours is not enough, and we need to spend more time talking, um, and people really want to listen to us for more than that. Um, I'm on my 2021 movies. I have 32 now. Okay, Ooh. now the ra- the number we're going for is, is, so I have 31 in 2020, which I've already surpassed now. But in 2019, the first, last normal year, I had 35. So we're going for 35, and we still got a month. So we're close. Very the close. goal is 36. I can get, if I can beat 2019, which is a very good year for me watching movies, then that's the goal. Also, also, just a little bit of a hint before we go off this thing, uh, or a teaser for what's to come. Mm-hmm. I'm currently working. Through the only letterbox, private letterbox list I have, I am actually going to be making a video, okay? This will be the most prepared for video I've ever made, which means I'm actually going to do preparation. I will be revealing for the first time in my entire life my top 10 favorite movies of all time. Ooh. I've never done this before, ever. And I will be for the first time giving a definitive not the best, because obviously if you need the best, you know, why the hell are you asking me? Um, the, my top 10 favorite movies of all time. Mm-hmm. This will be the most, like, I have a short list, I, I tell you now. I, I'm coming, I was coming up with a short, I've only, there's only one film that is a lock for that list. Okay. There are 15 films on the short list right now, which I'm going to have to choose from. And I'm assuming there'll end up being more because there are a lot of gaps. And I'm coming up with like a criteria list. It's going to be a very detailed thing. But it'll finally, then I'll be able to point to it now anytime anyone asks, oh, what's your favorite movie? I can now point to this video and say, stop asking me this stupid question over and over. So yeah. All right. That. So that's something that'll come at some point whenever I come up with, whenever I, because now I'm committed to like finishing this list at some point. Maybe maybe over Christmas, and I will, you know, come out with this video, and then I'll finally be able to get people to stop asking me what my favorite movie is. Because you know when people ask me that question, it's crazy, and it's very annoying. All right, well, we'll we'll like, have to. And then they say, like, what what do they expect from you? Like, do they expect you to pull out like if I said okay. something, right? Like say I said Infinity War or Endgame or Black Panther. I'm not gonna tell you how many of those, if any of those are on my short list. Maybe one of those is on my short list. You can guess which one. Um, Infinity War. I'm not gonna tell you. Um, the, it's Infinity War. <laughs> maybe it's Black Panther. I don't know. Um, but you know, like you know, it's it's like if I said something like that, right? Then it's like, well, what? I, oh, I completely forgot about this movie, or I forgot about this movie. You know, you know what I mean? Like you can say something, but then you're like, wait a second, there's seven other movies I forgot about. So it's a very unfair question to ask someone on the spot. 
any real person who has seen a lot of movies would not be able to tell you what their favorite movie is just like that yeah. without very clear deliberations and a very clear rubric as to or criteria i guess as to what did that entails right because favor can be defined in a number of ways like what do you prioritize like when i'm making my list i'm prioritizing rewatchability which means generally do i think there'll be some deep will there be a lot of deep dramas on my list no mm -hmm. because typically i don't like that kind of genre now will there be a few maybe i don't know i legitimately don't know but will there be some great all-time great movies which i would say are all-time greats let's say like for example one movie which will not be on my short list is the godfather mm -hmm. an all-time great movie but it's not on my list. Yeah. I'll tell you for a fact now, it'll not be a movie in my because it's not my one of my top ten. It's a great movie, you know. But it's not one I think is a very rewatchable or a very one I really like to rewatch. But I know it's a great movie and I do enjoy watching it. But it's not my top ten favorites. Maybe it's top twenty. Yeah. You know what I mean? I will join you on this um, listing off the top ten movies that we got. It's a very good idea. Yeah. You have to come up with this, then. I gotta come up with a list, yeah. I'll do that. Yeah, we can make it a... Not a podcast, because that would be too long, but... Yeah. Make like a video. Like a short little video. And I make cool graphics, too, so... Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be a whole big thing. But yeah, we're... Right. We can do it, that, it, yeah. It's coming down the pipeline, probably. It's one of those things that that i actually like really want to do because like it isn't just like something i'm saying like i'm i promise this coming like a lot of things where and then it just never comes because i just get lazy or bored but this is something i really want to do because then i can actually because it's ve actually very annoying when people ask the question so now i can just point to this so i don't have to think about it and i can just say hey i can plug myself right i can say hey i've got this video right and so I got to plug myself while also not having to answer the question on the spot because it's been meticulously thought out. Mm -hmm. It's and you've got to use Letterboxd. Yeah, I I added Eternals to the list of best 2021 movies. So you're using Letterboxd now. Yeah. Letterboxd is the greatest thing. And yes, this is still unsponsored praise of Letterboxd. Please, Letterbox. Please sponsor us. We need the money. Please, thank you. We appreciate it. I mean, like, we just want. Look, I just want Letterbox to recognize my existence. Please There's Letterboxd a reason I use their app. It's one of my most used apps. Please, we 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 work hard. Please help us. Um. Yes. Yeah, so before this become very weird. Um. Thank you all for watching. Uh, we forgot Thanks, to do the introduction at the beginning. I just realized. Yeah, you can follow us on social media. We're going to have it posted. We've mentioned it's it everywhere, before. everywhere, whatever. I haven't uploaded like the last three episodes to iTunes, but I will do that again now. Mm -hmm. Thank you if you got to this point. I don't know how you did. I barely did. Um, <laughs> and I'm talking. So, you know. <laughs> Thank you for listening. So thanks, y'all. Do the re ratings and reviews and likes and subscribes and comments and if this like look, if this ends, if I end up actually putting this on, um, on iTunes, or the podcast things in general, besides YouTube, which I haven't done for the last two, then do the stuff that you would do there. If I get lazy and I just put it on YouTube and be done with it, then I guess don't. I don't know. Look, I am yeah. And if you're watching this and it's still you know, this week, then that means I I did a good thing and I actually edited this. Yeah. Look at that. See, so you in the future know how this turned out. That sounds very Minority Report-ish. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so I don't know. What, what was the point of that? I don't know. I just, okay, I need to stop. I need to sleep. That's what I'm going to do. I need to go to sleep. All right, y'all. We'll uh, we'll see we see we'll see y'all soon. I'm losing my mind. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Um. Yeah. yeah you finish fin finish the sign off thing. And the... all right. Well, we appreciate y'all for watching. Uh, we're gonna come back soon, record another one, and yeah. Uh, have a enjoy enjoy y'all's weeks. Take care.